Hi, this is Sister Unity. We've just had a wonderful time. We did two gay history tours here in Los Angeles. We gave the history of West Hollywood, Hollywood, and Silver Lake areas of Los Angeles, which are the hotbeds of gay rights activism in the 20th and 21st centuries. And on the tour, we were accompanied by one of the other sisters who you've seen in some of the videos that I've made. I think you remember her. Howdy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sister Mora. Uh -huh. Sister Mora Fien. You remember her, right? And I'm sober. Not a dang thing to drink or smoke at all today. She's sober. And doesn't look likely to fall off her chair. No, I don't think so. Maura, did you go on the tour today? Yes, I did. And what did you like about the tour? Um, I enjoyed uh, a lot of the a lot of the history that you know that was that you went over and um, you know got to learn a lot a lot about um, what went on in uh, West Hollywood. It was very nice and educational. <laughs> <laughs> in 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 ways, let's just put it that way. Maura, do you want to tell the people about Elsie? Oh, um, Elsie in my head? Yes, Elsie in your head. Yes, Elsie is, uh, she's been active lately and it's been affecting my speech really, really badly as of late. And so she's on the move again, so she may be getting larger or whatever. Elsie is a brain tumor, by the way. Elsie is a brain tumor that's in his head. And how long has Elsie been there? She's been there, uh, let's see, it's 2014, so she's been there 13 years. And what brought Elsie on? What, what conditions helped to promulgate her growth? Encephalitis and uh, CMV is back active again, which they say they have cured, and there's no more CMV, but yeah. yes, it's still around. Us old timers still have it. And am I correct or mistaken in remembering you saying that that these uh, were involved somehow in complications with medication that you were taking, HIV medication that you were taking. Yes, um, that was with uh, Kalitra. So, um, so there's a direct relationship between having LC, the brain tumor in your head, and the HIV medications that you have been taking for, like, what, two decades? Um, no, for about um, two, three years. Oh, really? Yeah, I did not st start medication until um, really '99. When did you? Well, well, it's 2014, so that's 15 years. Well, yeah, but you know what I'm saying. I, to, um, to begin with, I didn't start my HIV medication until 99 because I was asymptomatic right. all the way up until then. When did you contract, if I can ask? Um, in 99. You became HIV positive in... Oh, in, in 84. In 1984, you yeah. zero-converted, meaning your status changed from HIV negative to HIV positive, meaning... You had unprotected sex with someone and contracted the AIDS virus in 1984. As a virgin in a small in my small hometown. Where was that? Sonora, California. In California, because in 1984 there was not a lot of AIDS education yet in promulgated in the country, not a lot. And in rural locations, they weren't telling anybody anything. And unfortunately, those conditions still exist in rural locations. Unfortunately, there are a lot of them in the South, but that's not the only place in the country where AIDS education is uh, lacking. And one of the reasons that it is often lacking is because of uh, policies, social and political policies, that restrict sex education. They don't want to teach controversial topics about sex and human sexuality, and that ends up including AIDS. And here in Los Angeles, where a lot of gay people come once they are of age and they want to make a life for themselves in a city that has a strong support community for gay people, we hear the stories often that people zero-converted, that they became HIV, HIV positive because they had no idea that you can get AIDS from sex because no one taught them. So you contracted in 84, mm -hmm. but you were asymptomatic until 99, and 99 is when you started taking the, the, the drugs. 
Right. But the drugs are very strong, and those caused various complications. Uh, loss of mo- mobility in your leg, is that right? Um, no, that was, that was due to the, uh, to the brain tumor and the encephalitis. Um, but the neuropathy was directly, is a direct relation to um, the zero that, that I was taking. So the, the uh, medications, the cocktails, the famous cocktails that cure AIDS or you know, make AIDS all better, uh, meaning make it a manageable disease, a chronic disease, um, and that do save lives. So these drugs are very intense, that's something to know, and the intensity of the effects of these chemicals on your body has caused ELSI, this brain tumor, and uh, which is came from encephalitis. So they sort of contributed to the conditions that caused encephalitis, which caused LC, uh, which caused limited mobility in one of your legs, limited motion in one of your arms, is that right? Yeah, my whole left side, basically. Your whole left side, okay. So that's something to know about the AIDS cocktail, and I'm particularly saying this for young people and I've met a num- fair number of people, for young people who uh, don't think that catching AIDS, catching HIV viruses is, is uh, significant because there are medications for it. Yes, there are. Yes, it can save your life. Uh, but that those, everyone's body is different and drugs are strong chemicals and they interact with your chemistry in various ways. And here's Sister Mora and the medications have caused encephalitis and a somewhat semi-paralysis on her left side and a brain tumor called Elsie. That's it. And um, the medications, they are very strong. And if you think that you can just take a pill and everything will be fine, if you can take it. I've thrown up so much from taking pills that I lost all the uh, dentine on my teeth. So, or the, uh, not the dentine, but the um, The enamel. enamel. And so that's why why my my teeth are so bad. No matter how much I brush, this you know it's just they're just bad. They need to come out. They're going to kill me one of these days if I don't get them taken out. And also, you can hear her speech. She's not drunk. Her speech is not all that different from how it was in the other two videos I made where she was drunk. But she's not now, and that's how her speech is affected. So don't you, any of you, make any fun of my sister Mora because she has been through hell. She, she's a piece of beef jerky. She's been strung, wrung, and dried, but she's still good to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just going to not even say what I'm thinking on that one. <clears throat> the thing I love about sister Mora and why she's my friend is because for all of her craziness and for all of her drinking... <laughs> Her spirit is shining gold. She has absolute, true, perfect beauty in her heart. She understands the sister's mission of helping people from a place that is pure. She really seeks to uplift people. She really understands compassion. And she really prioritizes compassion and making people happy and relieving people of shame and guilt. She does this so purely and so well and speaks of it so strongly and so clearly. That's the beauty of Sister Mora. <laughs>